Hi, and welcome to vlog number nine. This is actually a bit of a follow-on vlog from vlog eight, where I looked at the England versus Tunisia uh, game. For many years, I have been a critic of the way England play. I've seen the same patterns be repeated again and again. What I've regularly criticized England for is how they have struggled to retain possessions at key moments in matches. I've been encouraged recently by what Southgate is saying, the way he's communicating his ideas, by the way the team are trying to play. It's certainly not perfect and it doesn't make them the best team in the world all of a sudden. I've just seen some promise, some suggestion that we could be moving in a new direction. It was one all and the second half was not going as well as the first half. I just saw a lot of the same old comments being made around the game. So I thought in this vlog I'd look a little bit more at the external factors affecting the England team. Southgate and the England team are trying to play a certain way. Uh, and it's a way that everyone's been asking for, being able to retain possession in big matches, in competitions, and not just concede all the time, give possession over to the opponent. They've worked this through their junior side, it's been working very well for them. They play through the thirds, a bit more patience, and when they get into there, it's actually very quick interplay. The coach, his message is, I want calm, I want patience, I want a belief in the system, the style of play, uh, and I want to be measured the way we respond to things that happen. You've got a group of players that seem to be buying into that now. A bit of adversity, something goes not quite as you wanted it to, and there's a little bit of argument. You don't tend to see that too often with Spain. That they're playing this, this confident way out from the back, they know it will sometimes go astray, it'll go wrong, they kind of keep calm. There's no big, oh, what are we doing, what are we doing? But the media are giving results-based feedback. If the result's good, the performance is, it must have been good. If the result's bad, the performance must be bad. But the ratings won't be good of these players unless a winner is found, was said by the commentator. You just think, why? Does that mean Jordan Pickford played it differently if someone scores at the end of the pitch? Does that mean your centre backs have played differently? Uh, your player that's, that's created chance after chance, but another player hasn't finished. So is he not playing well now? This idea of just saying it's all about the result, that's short term. That's going to get you a short term success at best. There has to be an attitude that sometimes things will go wrong. Sometimes decisions will go against you, but everything doesn't fall apart when it does. So England score, they get the, the winner they, they probably deserve for the, for the 90 minutes. And the, the quote comes out there, there's been so many good individual performances. So all those individuals have played better now because a moment on a set piece went, went well, was finished well by Harry Kane, everyone's played better. I know, ultimately, their results will be judged, but, not all results are a fair reflection of performance. Spain won a World Cup by losing the first game of it. That, that, they didn't panic, they went on and won the World Cup. Defeat will happen if you deal with that fast and look at performance uh, of players and you believe that good performances will normally lead to results, then you have a more measured approach. The media report, it just feels like it's always so dramatic. It's always, it's hyperbole all the time, exaggeration. Uh, Everyone's either a hero or a villain. There's not much of a middle ground. So Harry Kane is the hero right now and Sterling is the villain because he didn't do this. And Lingard's a villain because he didn't score. And people are ringing in on phone lines. They should be dropped from the game. Uh, and this kind of overreaction will affect the coach and the players if we're not careful. It has done in the past. These ex-pros should know better. They've played themselves. How quick are they to go, oh, it's not working. Keown, Jenas, get the ball forward early. Get it pumped forward, get the ball kicked. That's not the way Southgate has prepared England. That's not the way they're building to. How is that thumping it forward and chucking it in the box? How much success has that brought the England team over the years? But there's constant reminders of history. They're always trying to find a statistic or a link to history, which is going to show that 1966 will happen again. And it ends up just being a big weight on the back of everyone. Move forward, look at what they're trying to do now and see if that could bring success. All this, this negativity, all this kind of reactionary behavior tends to, to lead to people looking for scapegoats, for excuses all the time, reasons that we're going to fail, um, making ourselves the victim. Oh, the referee was against us, that decision went against us. Yeah, it did, we'll deal with it. Yeah. If every time we're faced with a problem, the reaction is, oh, it's not fair, everything's gone wrong again, it's just like England, just like England all the time. That attitude, it gets picked up by the players, it really does eventually, that seeps into their consciousness too. This nagging doubt that, oh, here we go again. No, that was them, this is now. There doesn't have to be a villain of the piece or even an out-and-out -out hero, and if we can encourage that attitude of team, your individuals will stop their moments. 
but no one be fearing that they're going to be the scapegoat. At the moment, it seems they're trying to make Sterling the scapegoat. It'll be his fault when things go wrong. This is a player that's played brilliantly in an awesome Man City team, managed by one of the best coaches, if not the best coach, in the whole world. He's picking him. He knows he's good. This player's a good player. Give him a chance. Tunisia lost uh, in a friendly, was it 1-0? They lost to Spain just the other day. They they want to win for their country just as much as the England players do. Uh, and they frustrated England at times, but England dominated them in many, many ways. But all these, these, these messages were given from when we watch the TV and watch another game, that definitely does pass on to the supporters. And so you get this general feeling around the country of, of doom and gloom, of, of impatience. As the old ways of doing things didn't bring success, they just brought frustration. When a coach is trying to do something different, you have to give it time. You have to be prepared for it to go wrong and then see how they respond to that. We want to build resilience for all the players. We have to be able to respond to things going wrong. A bit of actual thinking instead of just responding emotionally. So in English football, there's generally a culture of, of rush. Everything's rushed. Uh, I think that's part of the weather. It, it can be that simple. When you're coaching in the winter and it's thrown it down, it's hard to have everyone stood around listening to tactical information. We know we tend to want to keep things moving all the time. There's sometimes a bit of a negative attitude to actually learning something on the pitch, as opposed to I just want to kick the ball, I want to play. When I've coached foreign players uh, in England that have come over to England to play, it does seem like a diff different attitude to learning tactics, positioning, to the, 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 the way they access learning, the way they uh, approach uh, developing themselves as a player is often quite different to a, to a lot of English players. There's a, there's a quote I used to always use when I was a teacher, uh, which is, if you always do what you've always done, you'll always get what you've always got. So England have had a similar approach to most tournaments, you know, the scapegoat thing and the doom and gloom and responding and getting kicked up front and have more passion, get stuck in. That kind of way of thinking hasn't brought success. So the, try something different now. I think if we could have more analysis, a more measured approach, you might start to see that a real change in attitude generally uh, towards football and towards coaching and player development at all levels in England. I think it's really good to see England finally retaining the ball more, finally having players that are allowed to move, having more freedom on the pitch. If you think back to past England squads uh, and lineups, well, for so long it was about 4 4 2. We'd also want to get our number in here because teams would have three players in the field, we had two. We did not let our players roam as much, they tend to stay in their areas. We even had like Paul Scholes playing at 11 on the left midfield because we didn't want to change to having potentially three in midfield. And it took a long time to change the attitude towards that. Now we have a team that's that's got seven over three levels to it. We now have a team that has at least can be four levels to it, arguably even five um, layers to the team. Players are picking up areas of the pitch now they weren't before. So there's a real kind of potential here with this formation for England to dominate with the ball. This is not about having all the possession, but it's about having more of the possession in key moments in the game. You're beating uh, a, a, a world-class side, you want to have some of the ball, don't you? You don't want to just keep giving the ball back to them, giving someone like Messi and Ronaldo the ball again and again. Have players that are comfortable in those scenarios. So basically, I think what I'm saying is England uh, we need some cognitive behaviour therapy, some CBT. I think we need to change the way we think and approach um, football tournaments. I've seen it in other sports, for example, such as cycling, where uh, England and Britain as a whole uh, have become world beaters. And, and it was a change in attitude, a change in thinking. Someone came in and changed it up a little bit. Thanks for watching this vlog and uh, do feel free to comment and give your own opinions on it. And uh, I look forward to speaking to you all in the next vlog.